Here's a challenge to all Zucker Nike fans. Watch this video, see what Zucker Nike says about a passage of the Bible, then see what the Bible passage actually says, and then try to convince us that this man isn't a compulsive liar. Now I say to everyone, as a rule, whenever someone like Dr. Zucker Nike is quoting the Bible to you, you really, really need to go to the passage and read it because he's trying to deceive you. Even if he's quoting the Quran, you need to go to the passage and read it because he's trying to deceive you. Anyone who stands in front of an audience and tells people with a straight face that according to the Bible, Jesus never died, has absolutely no integrity. And yet, that's exactly what Zucker Knight does. In his presentation on the death and resurrection of Jesus, Zucker Knight claims that according to the Bible, Jesus never died. Nike relies on the gullibility and ignorance of his followers to make his case. His main argument is that when someone is resurrected, he comes back as a disembodied spirit. But after his crucifixion, Jesus appeared to his followers with a physical body. Hence, Jesus wasn't resurrected because he wasn't a disembodied spirit. And since he wasn't a disembodied spirit, but instead had a body, Jesus was showing his followers that he never died. This, of course, is incredibly stupid to anyone who knows anything about Judaism or Christianity or Islam. According to Judaism and Christianity and Islam, resurrection is resurrection of the body. If you appear as a disembodied spirit, you haven't been resurrected. You're resurrected when your body is raised from the dead in a supernatural state. So in the Gospels, when Jesus was showing his disciples that he had a body, he was showing them that he wasn't just a spirit, he had been resurrected. His body had been raised in a supernatural state. But Zucker Knight knows that his followers are completely ignorant about all of this, so he knows that he can lie to them. Let's look at an example of Zucker Knight reading a passage, he's reading from the Gospel of Luke, and trying to convince his listeners that Jesus didn't die and didn't rise from the dead. When the disciples, they met in the upper room, Jesus peace be upon him, he comes. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 36. He comes and he says to the disciple, Shalom, in Hebrew, which means peace unto you. So far, so good, but it's Zucker Nike, so we know he's about to start lying. Next verse, Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 37, says, But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed him to be a spirit. I'm asking a question. Why did the disciples think Jesus peace be upon him to be a spirit. We actually know exactly why the disciples thought Jesus was a spirit. His disciples had no concept of someone being resurrected before the general resurrection of the dead at the final judgment. So if someone died and then suddenly appeared, they wouldn't think, oh, resurrection. They would think his spirit has appeared to us. It would be the same thing for many people today. If someone's grandma dies, and his grandma is buried, and then he suddenly sees grandma walking around, his first reaction would be that he's seeing a ghost. He wouldn't conclude that she had been physically raised from the dead unless he found out that she had a physical body. Therefore, they think and they thought that he was a spirit. But Jesus, please be upon to clarify that out. It's mentioned in the next two verses. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, verse number 39 and 40, Jesus, please be upon him, says that Behold my hands and feet. It is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has no flesh and bone, as you see me have. And seeing so, he shows them his hands and feet. Yes, Jesus was showing his disciples that he had a physical body so that they would know he wasn't a disembodied spirit. He had been resurrected because, again, according to Judaism and Christianity and even Islam, resurrection is resurrection of the body. If you don't have a body, you're a disembodied spirit. You haven't been resurrected. Now, watch Zucker Nike claim the exact opposite. He tells them, behold my hands and feet. It is I myself. What has happened to you? It is me, your Lord and Master Jesus, peace be upon him. Why are you frightened? Handle me and see. Behold my hands and feet, for a spirit has no flesh and bones. What was he trying to prove by showing his hands and feet? He was trying to show them that he had a body and that he had therefore been resurrected. What was he trying to prove by showing his hands and feet? 
Was he trying to prove that he was resurrected? Yep. Was he trying to prove that he was spirit? He was trying to prove that he was not a spirit. He was not resurrected. Jesus showed his disciples that he had a body so that they would understand that he had been resurrected. Zachar Knight tells his listeners that Jesus showing them that he had a physical body meant that he hadn't been resurrected. Zachar Knight is contradicting Judaism and Christianity and Islam, and he just doesn't care. And neither do his followers. But even now, his followers will still agree with him. Right now, as they're watching me, they're shouting at me, saying, Zachar Knight is right. Resurrection means you're just a disembodied spirit. Jesus had a body, so he hadn't been resurrected. We know absolutely nothing about theology, but we believe everything Zachar Knight says. They're saying this because they've been psychologically conditioned to agree with anything Zachar Knight says, especially when he's lying about Christianity. But this is where things get fun. This is the part of the video where no one has to take my word for anything, because we're going to go to the passage that Zachar Knight quoted to see what Jesus actually said. We're about to find out either that Zachar Knight speaks the truth or that he's a complete, utter, total liar. Here's the passage Zachar Knight was using to show that Jesus hadn't been resurrected and hadn't even died. According to Zachar Knight, resurrection means that you return as a disembodied spirit. But Jesus had a physical body, which means that Jesus hadn't been resurrected. He hadn't been raised from the dead. He hadn't died. He was still alive, and he was trying to show his disciples that he was still alive. Let's read the passage. Luke 24, verses 36 to 42. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. According to Zachar Naik, the most popular Dawagandist in history, in this passage, Jesus is trying to convince his followers that he didn't die and didn't rise from the dead. Now, since Zachar Naik is a compulsive liar and we definitely can't trust him when he quotes the Bible, let's keep reading where he left off, just to make sure he isn't pulling another fast one. The passage continues. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Why? so that they would understand that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. Rise from the dead. Rise from the dead. Hard to rise from the dead unless you were dead. According to the verses that Zachar Knight conveniently left out, what was Jesus doing when he appeared to his disciples? He was showing them that he had risen from the dead and that it had to be that way. According to Zachar Naik, what was Jesus doing when he appeared to his disciples? He was showing them that he hadn't died and hadn't risen from the dead. Zachar Naik tells his gullible followers that Jesus was doing the exact opposite of what Jesus said he was doing. Jesus literally explained what he was doing, and Zachar Naik tells his audience that Jesus was doing the exact opposite of what Jesus said he was doing. This passage in Luke isn't confusing at all. Jesus' disciples had no concept of a dying or rising Messiah. But Jesus died, then appeared to them. That would have been extremely confusing to them. So, to show them that he had been resurrected, he showed them that he wasn't a ghost. He had a physical body. And then he helped them understand that 
according to the scriptures, it had to be this way. Zakarnaik lies about all of this and pretends that Jesus was trying desperately to convince his followers that he hadn't died at all. If that was Jesus' intention, he failed pretty miserably because his followers concluded that he had been resurrected. Jesus explained to his followers that he had to die and rise from the dead. But Zakarnaik conveniently leaves that part out because it completely destroys everything he's saying to his gullible audience. Now tell me, all you Zakarnaik fans, what kind of man reads a passage which clearly says that Jesus had to rise from the dead, but conveniently leaves out the part where Jesus clearly says that he had to rise from the dead, and then twists the rest of the passage to make it sound like Jesus never died and never rose from the dead. What kind of man does that? A liar, a deceiver, a con artist, a charlatan. So the only question now is, since it's so easy to see that Zakarnaik lies whenever he talks about Jesus, since all you have to do is just read the passage to see that Zakarnaik is lying, why has Zakarnaik been your hero and your champion for decades? Why doesn't it bother you that all of your most popular apologists are liars, deceivers, con artists, charlatans? What does this tell us about your religion? This is a powerful religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?